Okay, here's a little feedback from the written homework number two and quiz three. There was a couple problems that were commonly missed, so I want to talk about those a little bit. The most commonly missed problem was the one where they want you to find the domain of the composition of two functions. So the, the, what, what makes that harder is that it's, think of it as two stages. In this, the inside function is g of x, so x has to be in the, the domain of the inside function. And when you form the, the composition, x must be in the domain of that, that, re, that result also. So what, what I would suggest you do is first find the, the uh, composition of the two functions. And you, you can rule out 6, right? Because when you form the composition, you can hit the pause button and check this if you want. If you, if you, hit, if you find the composition, x can equal 6. It makes the bottom 0. But then you have to go back and ask yourself, what about the inside function? The inside function was this, right? So, so this is why for g of x, you have to rule out 2 also. So, that, so, so the way you would write it is negative infinity to 2, union 2 to 6, union, union 6 to infinity. <clears throat> All right. Another thing was, that was commonly missed is finding the inverse of a function. Now, remember, it has to be a one-to-one -one function before you can find the inverse. But, it, but if, 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 if it's a one-to-one -one function, then you, you can, um, you can uh, what I would suggest you first do is let y equal the function instead of f of x. Let y equal 9 minus 2x. And then switch x and y. Because remember, if, if you re recall, when, when we found the inverse, with tables uh, we, and with graphs, we, we, we are switching x, x and y coordinates. That, that's, how, that's how you form the inverse. And then solving for y. In this case, you, would, uh, you, would, uh, you could um, subtract 9 and divide by neg negative 2. And when you get to here, you could move the negative up and dis distribute the negative, which changes the order, right? So this is the inverse function. Now, by the way, on, on, in some books, they'll, they'll solve for y and then switch x and y. It doesn't make any difference which order you do these in. So that, that's the inverse function. Now, a couple more things as long as we're at it. One thing, one property that inverse functions have is whenever you form the composition of a function with its inverse function, you always get x. And again, you, you, you can see that better if you look at tables and you, and you look, look at what, what happens whenever you took it, take f of f inverse of, say, 2 on a table, you'll see that you, you always get back to where you started. So if it asks you to, to verify that, that, that the, the composition is x, you could, you could just form f of f inverse. This is f inverse. So you'd, f of this is 9 minus twice it, right? So then if you simplify it, you'll always get x. Now, I, I didn't do the other way around, but, but that is also true. f inverse of f of x is also x. Finally, graphically, they're inter interesting. Whenever you, whenever you graph a function in its inverse, um, uh, the graphs are symmetric with respect to y equals x. So let me show you that better on the graphing ca calculator. Let's see here. Do I have this in here? I think I do. Let me see. y equals... Oh, wait a second. Okay, so let me first of all just... Just, just graph. Um, well, let me graph all these. This, this is the function. This is the inverse function, and this, this is y equals x. So, so this is y equals x. So you see, the graphs are symmetric with with respect to y equals x. Um, anyway, that's it.